there are some auditions that it just doesn't work and we don't need to talk about it again for this project, watch it again, it can go into the no pile. But yes, there are some that you're on the fence with in the room. Something intriguing to me, it's not really working right now, I'm not sure why. Let's watch the tape back later. And then we, you can step back and maybe after the crazy day you've had and you have a fresh head tomorrow, we'll watch the tape and say, oh, okay, this is what we liked. Let's get them back in the room. Let's call and give them notes and they can send us a self-tape doing the notes. Uh, or let's just get them on Skype. Or probably it's going to be Zoom now and do it live with them on Zoom. Uh, so yeah, every one of those possibilities that an actor can create, sure, we've done it, we will do it. Uh, but there's no rhyme or reason. There's no, this is what happens every time. But, you know, we always want to find the best actor, actress for the job. So whatever we have to do to get there, we'll do it. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm here with casting director, Jeremy Gordon. Jeremy, how are you doing, man? I am doing just fine, all things considered. Thank you. Absolutely. That's the that's a running theme with people I'm talking to. Everyone's good, all things considered, I think. Yeah, right I know now. what else to say. Like, so I, I'm great today, isolated and great. But when you think of the world, am I great? I don't know. So all things considered, I'm doing fine. I hear you. I hear you. And I mean, you've been pretty busy considering, you know, uh, the current situation. You actually have had some work and you worked on this IGTV uh, quarantine show, which is kind of a sort of first of its kind sort of thing, all done over Zoom and everything, which is, must have been cool and crazy. Um, maybe, yeah. maybe you can speak to that a little bit, like that experience, and were sure. you even expecting anything when the lockdown first hit? Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know if anybody was expecting anything when it started. I, I think I had, I don't remember, a week or two weeks of downtime. Uh, when we got locked down to before quarantine actually started, you know, so I was cleaning my house six times a day and, and watching Netflix and whatever. And then Spencer Garrett, who's my producing partner, uh, was involved with the sh quarantine show through Jerry Ying, who's the creator. Uh, and Spencer just called me out of the blue and he's like, so I have this thing that I'm doing. We just need, you know, a few characters cast. Can you help us out? Sure. Well, you know, I'm not going to say no to Spencer. And yeah, sure, this thing sounds fun. Uh, and that spiraled into this massive idea for a 25 episode TV series donating all of our proceeds to the SAG after COVID 19 so. uh, relief fund. So the SAG after Foundation. Uh, so we quickly realized oh, this wasn't going to be just here's three actors it was going to be a whole thing and we're going to produce it and we're going to make it instead of a small little youtube show we're going to make it an igtv series and make it this much bigger thing so it literally became uh, you know most television shows on on networks have what 22 23 24 episodes over an entire season we had 25 episodes over two months uh, and on, on a platform we knew nothing about this had not been done before we had nobody had written the book this had <laughs> Yeah, there were no rules. We went there. We were just going for it, uh, but it was great. It, it was a great experience, and it gave my quarantine time something worthwhile to look back on. You know, not just what, binge watching twenty Netflix shows. We actually produced our own show. And we sure. got to work with some amazing people, and everyone stayed safe at home on Zoom. Yeah, just binge watching two or three Netflix shows whilst making your own seems seems a better way to go, right? <laughs> um, but like, what, what's that like, I guess, from a casting perspective? I guess it's not totally new in terms of self-taping and, and sort of remote casting, but the full process being so isolated from the rest of the crew and everybody involved, was that, was that I mean, it's new ground. How was that for you as an experience? So our, our experience overall was different because we didn't have auditions for this. So ah, we okay. didn't have any type of casting process for this because we were going to be shooting episodes for an unknown period of time. We always said we were going to do this through the end of the lockdown. We didn't know if that was going to be a few weeks or a few months. We didn't know how long we would need the actors for it. So we couldn't just have auditions and have, you know, quote unquote, random actors sure, say, sure. yes, you can, you can use me for free. By the way, remember I was working for free for two months, three months, six months. Sure. So we had to reach out to our friends. 
uh, who were right for the project, who we could kind of use and abuse. And <clears throat> while we had, a, we, were, we were SAG and we had a new media contract, our friends said, yes, I want to be part of this. I want to help you raise money. If it's two weeks, great. If it's two months, great. If it's longer, whatever. Uh, so we called our actors for the, I think there were 10 series regular roles, a, a few recurring guest stars and a bunch of just one off guest stars. But they were all people we knew. So there were no auditions. Uh, I guess, thankfully, that would have made it a lot more difficult. Uh, but you're still well, piecing yeah. together that creative tapestry, right? Oh, and sure. I guess, were you also developing the story as you were going along a little <laughs> bit, right? Everything as we were going along. We were we could have taken more time in the beginning, but we were sort of afraid that somebody else would do it first. So we wanted to be the first. We can go back and say we were absolutely the first to do this. So we didn't want to wait. So we had some storylines flushed out. We kind of knew where we wanted things to go, but it was, we, the writer's room was active. We had three, at first it was five episodes a week. And we t uh, tweaked. <laughs> at that point, you're like, that's too much. That's a lot of work. <laughs> So even three episodes is crazy, but we were literally writing stories and writing the beats that was unscripted. It was kind of like Curb Your Enthusiasm, unscripted improv. So we were sending actors beats a day before so they knew what's going on. And then everything was happening at the same time. The casting, I mean, there were, there were times when we were trying to close deals the night before we were supposed to shoot an actor, uh, you know, because God bless all these agency managers who are working from home and Again, no one's making money on this, but everyone was really cool and uh, worked very quickly for us to get all these actors' deals closed. Uh, I guess it's just being able to do something creative with the time. And we're all going to look back on this in some way or another, and it's maybe nice to look back on it with a, a lighter aspect to this pretty dark time, too, and go, well, okay, but cool, like this thing came out of it where we all kind of came together Absolutely. like we do. Absolutely. I mean, there, there were... There were parts of our show that were heavier or dramatic. You know, I still look at it as a, as a real life dramedy. But yes, it, it was definitely lighter. We didn't make fun of COVID. None of our, our cast members came down with COVID. We weren't trying to make fun of it. Um, but we were trying to find the lighter side of the experience of living through a COVID quarantine uh, so that it could be entertainment and that people really, the messages we got on, on Instagram were that they could relate, but it also was so nice to be able to laugh or eight minutes or whatever, however long the episode was. And our actors didn't really want to end. They wanted to keep going. <laughs> sure. Well, that's always the case though, isn't it? It's always yeah. like, yeah, when they're making money, they want it well, to keep going. Free. There's that too. But even now where it's like, we don't know when the money is coming back in. So just give me something, just give me a script or something to do something. Sure. It's super interesting, obviously with IGTV and all these newer plat newer platforms, I suppose. I had, um, I was talking to Bonnie Gillespie a few weeks back. She did like a thing yeah, she's the best. And she's doing this thing or did this thing during lockdown, uh, which is a Twitch based uh, show. And it's like live sort of action. But in the moment, the story evolves uh, along with what people are asking. So it's like a totally new, innovative concept. What's like, how do you, with your producer hat on, maybe see all these new platforms fitting into fitting into the game? Like, do you see them being a big seismic shift changer or just like a new thing alongside the old traditional models? You mean for new series concepts? I guess just for, yeah, series concepts are generally putting stories out into the world, right? Oh, sure, for sure. Um, I think it's going to be two things. I think there'll be the contingent of people who are sick and tired of Zoom or doing anything online by the time we're done with this because it looks like we're heading into longer crazy more of this for lord knows how long so i think there'll be the contingent of over it but i think i, I truly think and the way I, I think about safety right now is there's just no way to truly be safe on set right now especially for actors you know the crew can take a, a lot more precautions but when you're the one on camera you can't and i just don't think there's any real safe way to do it right now especially with the number spiking so i think this is going to be a real thing. And I forget who, but there's a sh there's shows out there already being created for network television, but shot on Zoom. 
you know, that's why we wanted to be the first. So while we might not be on network television, we at least did it first. We did it before SNL. We did it before we rise. We did it before all of these established shows did their one-off episodes. We have 25 episodes. So I think it's going to be a real thing. I've been approached to, to work on another zoom based series. I think it's here to stay. I think it's going to become more prevalent, not just with self tapes, but, sort of in the storytelling world. I, I think it's unavoidable at this point because- We don't know. If we got back to set tomorrow because there was a miracle vaccine created overnight. When you look at flu season in January, which is pilot season, it's now flu slash COVID season. So are we gonna be back on set? Is there going to be a pilot season or is it, is it I don't know. Who knows, knowing humans, I think anything that looks like flu will get called COVID and panic will hit. So it's like, it's this first time for all of us. I don't think anyone has any clue like you're saying, but we can't just sit on our ass right. and do nothing. So it's, it's, I guess that thing where, you know, 2010, five years ago, even it wasn't quite an option to necessarily go and put something out on IGTV or Facebook, right. which is, you know, cool in of itself, I suppose. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's better than Netflix binging 24 seven. Sure. So we can move on to a bunch of other stuff. But before we do, I kind of like to take a few steps back. Sure. Maybe go into your origin story a little bit, sort of how you got into casting and, and then producing. And I guess the Cliff Notes version of your, uh, your superhero story in, in the industry. If you don't sure. Oh, gosh. Yeah, how I got into casting. Um, it is very random. I, I, so I studied acting in college. I went to, you know, I got the degree in acting. Uh, and then I went to grad school for education. So I have a master's in education and I was teaching uh, first grade, I taught seventh grade US history and English. And my best friend at the time, uh, Joe Dane, was a line producer for Full Moon Features. They uh, made you know, campy horror films where dolls come to life and kill you. Uh, and I was teaching seventh grade at the time and we decided that we were gonna start a production company because a line producer and a seventh grade teacher sets great to have a production company, right? Why not? Why not? Uh, so we did, we started a production company and Full Moon gave us right out of the gate because of his relationship with them, gave us a five picture deal to go produce these films with them. And they needed a casting director. So Joe says to me, well, you were an actor, so you be the casting director. I was like, well, I don't understand what that means. And I'm literally teaching a lesson on the Bill of Rights. So can I call you later? And we, we just did it. I, you know, I was like pushed out the door, jumping off that cliff two, two feet, I, making up as I go along. But it was great. And, and for me, learning how to cast and produce uh, at the same time. That's a lot. Your experience was a lot, but it was great. And I got to do it and make my mistakes and, and figure it out on these very low budget, non-union, cheesy, but awesome horror films. Uh, and from there, you know, built the resume and went and got other jobs and, and learned how to do these things actually. Uh, There's but, obviously something in that then, that experience of craziness and not knowing what you're doing that you must have clicked at some point and gone, kind of enjoy this yeah I enjoy this this is why I think I wanted to be an actor at some point this is why I studied acting and why I have a psychology minor <laughs> to make sense of it all uh, but all of the things that I had done sort of led to this being the right decision for me and I, I did it two years to, I was teaching for two years while simultaneously casting and producing and I said okay now I have to make a decision uh, and I went with casting and it was great. And I don't, don't regret it at all. I guess it lets you also, it's, I mean, I definitely get that sort of vibe that you do have the producer side running through your veins quite heavily too. Right. And it's sort of, yeah, you, you're not just casting, you're creating a for, lot of stuff. For, yeah. It's very difficult for me just to cast, which is one of the reasons why I like the indie world for me. Mm -hmm. it, it, I find it much more fulfilling because I can put on that producer hat and while I might not, technically pre be producing any specific project. I've got that producer hat on and, and I can lend that to these indie projects uh, that they benefit a lot from. And whatever I'm doing in life, I wear this producer hat and the big picture of it all and being in charge and in control, 
not in the in an egotistical way, but just as a, that's what I like to do. I like to put it all together and figure it all out. And, it's a big puzzle, right? You're kind of yeah. just piecing together all the pieces and 100%. looking ahead and seeing if that's still going to fit there in you know a couple of weeks because something might move it around. And yeah, it's that devil's advocate. It's that well, we can't do that because this could be a problem, which really drives a lot of people crazy when I keep bringing you, you up like problems, it. problems. But sorry, you know, it is what it is, right? So um, I still gotta do it. And that's an interesting distinction that you kind of touched on there where you're talking about indies, right? And indie films from the casting perspective where they're going to potentially want more of your input and, and not that they value it more, but that obviously on a, say, a network show, there's a lot more moving parts and your role is more defined and more, and more sort of niche. So am I totally making that up or is that a fair thing to say that there, yeah, is, yeah. there is that distinction for you? A hundred percent, you know, a network has all of its departments and all of its people and you are one small piece of that puzzle uh, and you are casting. And while, you know, an experienced casting director can also foresee some potential problems casting, they, they're really not interested in your thoughts on how it could affect production or, you know, anything that a producer would do, especially a TV producer, the almighty uh, in the indie world, they, they need that. And especially if you're working with producers that have only worked on a few projects, I've been doing this now for 15 years, so I can tell you this could be an issue, this could be an issue, or if you go this route, it won't be an issue. Uh, and there have been times when I have been asked to produce with them, or I did one film, Spork, where I was not a producer, but they, I was on set every single day for this film. Uh, it was a very special film. There were a lot of special things about it. Uh, and after a few days on set, they handed me a walkie-talkie. They're like, well, if you're going to be here, you should work. So we're going to pay you. Here's here's the walkie-talkie. Go to work. <laughs> it was great. But that's kind of what it is. I, I think from the indie side, it does make it feel more like that sort of moving circus, which is what a film being made really does feel like, especially that DIY approach, where everybody's kind of getting their hands in the dirt and you're creating this vision together. And I don't think you think of it more fondly than anything else. It's just, it does leave this special kind of mark on. Oh yeah. Having your life. But the act, also the actors that I have found and we've put in this, in this movie that I can actually watch them work and, and see what works and what doesn't work and, and see what they do and see how it all comes together with the actors that I usually just see in a room. We send them to set and we may do a set visit or two, but you know, after a, a film or a project is cast, they're like, Casting, great, good, done, bye, next. And we just wait for it to come out. So to to witness it is is remarkable. Because it's obviously so different, right? Obviously, like the the approach to auditioning in a room and what you're doing is a different skill set for an actor to what you do on set. That's oh, yes. clear. But for you to see the performance sort of fully fleshed out must be quite quite nice and rare to what you're saying as well. Yeah, and fully rewarding. I mean, the, I, I'm sure there have been a few times where I'm like, ooh, I don't know if this one really is working so much. But most of the time, it, it works. And it's it's really great to see what this amazing actor can do, obviously with the director, with the team working together. But it is so nice to see them just flourish on set. And this, this actress who was so shy and nervous, and then we finally broke through to them in the room, and now they're on set, and there's, you know, 100 people watching them, and ain't no thing. It's just great they're embodying the whole thing and, oh, yeah. and and yeah the the thing about i guess the the sort of vibe of what you're going for too like how do you find some of your projects i guess a lot of stuff comes to you like you said but do you find yourself trying to sort of look for people with similar tastes and and a similar sensibility for sort of the themes they they like to create and and reach out to them or or is it less kind of on the nose as that I, for me, so far, it's been most of the projects come to me unless it's a project that I'm creating with somebody. Sure. Uh, or a relationship that I've built uh, with a particular producer or a particular writer. And we've, we've done a few projects together and now, you know, there's, there's more in the pipeline. But for the most part, the projects that I worked on have come to me. Word of mouth, uh, you know, this producer said you worked with them. We want to work with you. Or He's the you know, Zoom guy. Yeah, he's the Zoom guy. Sure. I'll be the Zoom guy. Uh, project people said they've seen like, a film that I cast at a festival, or 
you know, they've checked out my IMDb and, you know, they like the projects that I've worked on. So we want to talk to you. So I've been very fortunate that projects have come to me that way. Do you have any particular, like one or two bugbears about sort of the casting process or the, or the job, not like hates, but if you could change something to make your life easier, is there anything that leaps out? Uh, anything that leaps out? Sure. Um, uh, I guess this is more on the the network TV side. There are the the the, the one line co star roles that we've all seen a million times. You know, the waiter, how would you like your steak cooked, sir? Something to that effect. What I've seen in the past are certain directors or projects for TV shows that I need to see fifty people read this line before I can make a decision. I'm like, do you do you really? It's it's the way I, we don't want a bad actor, but do you really need to see 50 people? Can I just show you some reels or can they, can they just send in a self tape? Do you really need to be in the room with them? You know, this, this four hour process on this one day of finding this one line coaster role, I could get that done in two seconds and we can move on to something. Uh, so moments like that, uh, you know, the, I have definitely worked with some TV, writer, producer, people that are definitely calling all of the shots. And the process is very much slowed down for a lot of reasons that we could change. Uh, but no one is, no one even at the network level is saying anything. We're just letting it go. And it just takes a lot of time. Um, and with as rushed as TV is, there's just not a lot of time to take a lot of time. Sure. So I, there are definitely some things that I would love to see streamlined it's for the, for the better of the project, not just because I'm impatient. No, but also it is the sense that we all have a finite amount of time, no matter what, and we can't invest all our energy equally to every single little thing. Like, you know, <laughs> dele delegations there for a reason. And also maybe, maybe with this current situation, there'll be more of that with self tapes and demo reels being enough for those co-stars because definitely you know, we're getting, I think, a little bit more perspective on what's important in our lives and maybe a four hour session for a one line that might get cut. Right. Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's an interesting point though on, on those co-star one lines, because I did have someone send in a question around that. And, and she was asking basically, you know, what, what advice would you give any actors who do come in or self tape for those one or two lines? Because it's so like, there's not a whole lot to go to go with there. Do you have any any insights from your side? I mean, there, there's no magic tricks. It's, sure. it's especially with self tapes. Uh, I, when I'm casting these smaller roles uh, on a self tape, I do tell the actors, we'll just do it, you know, two or three different ways and make sure that they are different so that we can see it. Don't just, you know, do a one line co star role on a self tape and send it in and be done. I, we don't know what, what we want. They don't know what they want. So just you show us what we want. Do it a few different ways. Sort of take control over this opportunity that you have. But for the most part, you just have to kind of do it and forget about it. Sure. Because the, the, the number of reasons that a decision is made for a one-line co-star, there are so many more reasons than there are lines for this one role. Uh, and none of us can control it. And it, so many things go into it on the show level and at the network and studio level. Even if you delivered it perfectly and everybody loves you, there's still 18 reasons why you're not getting this role. So you just have to do it. Forget about it. It's far beyond your control, my control, anybody's control. Don't dwell on it. You know, it, again, it's, it's great. You need this experience. You need this role. But if you don't get it, there's more. You kind of just have to put it in the can and throw it away. I guess it's the same as with any audition you do, but I suppose those one or two liners when you're wanting to build up those first three or four co-star credits, sure. because you're earlier on in your career for the most part, there is that thing of need is almost the wrong word, but there is that sort of innate, I got to get this. And that kind of clinging on to it for dear life, where it's the antithesis of that really, I guess it comes into play. Yeah. And the funny thing about it is we can see it or sense it easily when an actor needs that role mm. so badly it comes through even in a, in a one line it, it just comes through in the delivery and you know take a reporter for example reporter roles sometimes will have one or two lines and those are not easy because you can watch any tv show and sometimes there's a reporter you're like mm, that sounds so unrealistic but when it's delivered 
bright, you probably don't even notice it. You know, the line can be said, it probably doesn't even register for you. But when the actor wants it so badly, you just feel it. And then for us, it's like, well, that's not the person. We need someone who can do this silly one line role and have it almost go unnoticed so that we want them. It's, it sounds so strange and so opposite, but. Well, it's being natural, right? I think for the actor, because yeah. you know, we have such big egos, it's the thing of this is, this is all about me, but it's like, it's one line. You're serving the story for a, a, a small moment to take it from this beat to that beat. Yes. And it, I guess it's just learning to get out of our own heads a little bit and just, just say it, you know, right. I guess I mean, a lot of people just, refer to it as, okay, I don't know. This. Not putting flavor on it too much, I guess, would be the thing. Like, make it your own, but don't feel like you have to give me a backstory of, you know, this guy's just had a divorce and his kids being, you know, in child services. And <laughs> you don't need that. I, I had a friend, uh, he's still my friend, but he's not acting anymore. Um, he would spend like three or four days prepping for this one, two, three line coaster role. I'm like, dude. You gotta stop. You gotta stop. It, it is not helping you, and you're not booking these. You just, just go in and say the line. Say mm -hmm. it to me now. Think about it for a little bit, and then go in and do it. And, and you know, the the more he could throw it away, the more success he had with with booking these roles. But he chose to go a different route. <laughs> I think it's experience. I I just and you know, in my experience has been the more you do any kind of audition, the more you just get used to realizing number one, there's not a damn thing I can do about anything once I've done it. If I screw it up, I screw it up. There'll be another one. And like, even if I do a great job, who the hell knows or cares because there's so many other permutations that it's like out of your control and just enjoy the fact that you've been called in to do it. Like, it sounds I awful, but. I know. Yes, you're hundred percent. There's this one actress who, uh, this was years ago, but she had been reading for me for projects, commercials and, and films for years. And she was always getting to the end. She always made callbacks. She always made the last cut. She chemistry reads. She always made it to the end. Never booked the role. You know, always a bridesmaid, never a bride type of thing. Sure. And she yeah. would still come in for the next project, all smiley and happy and positive. And there was never a moment of self-doubt or, or I'm terrible or what am I doing wrong? And she just kept coming in and kept coming in and kept coming in. And then finally... We were able to book her on uh, an ABC Family commercial, which turned into, I think they, they shot like five or six commercials with the same, there was a family that I cast for ABC Family and they became the ABC Family family for these commercials, which was great. So she waited all this time, but then she booked a handful of commercials and then she, what, I don't know what happened in, in her head, but that clicked and she started booking the movies with me as well. And I was able to cast her a few times and, it's just wonderful, but and so nice to be able to keep calling her in. She was reliable and always kept it happy and positive, which for me is is just everything. And for you, it must be obviously super awesome to see that yeah. when you get. I mean, it must be nice to cast people generally, but to cast someone who you've almost had a journey with yourself, like totally. you know, that's that's half of I'm sure why you proud do of it. her, proud of myself, proud of us all. You know, it's all teamwork. I always want the actors to do well to do good jobs and it was finally you know to see her transition from chemistry read actress in my room anyway to booking 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 it's really nice it's a mindset game just as much as anything like anything in life right like you know the technique and the classes are essential but if that little bit of gray matter up here is is off then like with anything you want to do yeah. we're screwed <laughs> it's a good thing we've all picked such a stable industry to get into. Yes, uh, industry that makes a lot of sense. Yes, absolutely. Um, cool. So, talking about a lot of sense, let me get to some of these other questions that have come through. And and this one's one that I don't think. Well, it does make sense, but I don't like it, which is I'm going to ask it because it's interesting. <laughs> no, it's it's this. I don't like. You'll see why. The question is: Do you feel social media followings influence some productions at all when it comes to casting? Not maybe you and how you cast but holistically. So they're asking about the number of followers they have? I guess, yeah, like you know, having an audience and a fan base on the socials, do you feel like in some circles that might be, yeah, right? I, yeah, I mean, it, like it or hate it, yes, 100%. And it is, I have never seen it come from a casting director. I don't think casting directors say, you must have X number of followers 
to even audition or for us to consider calling you back. It, it comes from above. It comes from the producers and the studios and the networks, but it makes sense, right? So even on a, a studio film, we're talking about actors who have much bigger followings, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions, but 200,000 and 800,000 is a huge difference to a studio. There's differences in the number of magazine covers and talk shows and, uh, you know, uh, theaters that they can fill but on an indie film if you have 60 followers and on twitter and you still have that picture of an egg or you have a few thousand for a film festival film that's also a big deal Uh, you know you will get more interviews for the film festival circuit you will get more attention that way and then it becomes easier to build from 3,000 to 6,000 is much easier than to get from from 60 to 3,000 so the, the numbers do make a difference and and Social media is part of, I would think, every single television and film contract, no matter if you're a day player or the star of a network show. Social media is a part of it and what you are allowed to do and what you are not allowed to do. And you've got to interact with your fans. I mean, that's what drives this whole industry are the fans, right? Paparazzi exist because Jennifer Aniston is shopping on Robertson Boulevard, not just because she's a talented actress, but they want to know about her life. And same goes for, for every actor at every level and all of us. People want to know about us and they're liking our, our Instagram pictures that have nothing to do with the business because they want to know. Which is, a, I guess, scary or unnerving thing for a lot of creatives to hear who just want to focus on the purity of the art but then obviously you know it's that old adage of it's show business not you know so there is this is the business side of it by the same token though craft surely has to come ahead of having a million followers it's the balance that we're talking about here like nobody needs to go away and try to focus on getting a million instagram followers if they're not a good actor a hundred percent and yes and you could certainly buy your way <laughs> into the business and become an influencer. But even those influencers, and I have cast enough projects where the producers want some influencers, we can't stick an influencer who can't act for anything in this role because then it's obvious and the audience hates it and it it doesn't pan out and that influencer is gonna have a much shorter shelf life anyway. so yes, you need talent, just like you know the the son of a famous actor is going to need to have talent as well. Or they're only going to get to go so far. But the numbers help, you know. Having a parent in show business helps. Having a lot of uh, social media followers helps. Real social media followers. Real social point, media followers. Right? Yes. Not the uh, not the bots that we've bought. No bots. For, yeah, don't be buying that that nonsense. Buy bots because we can see it in two seconds. It's so obvious when you go to a profile. They've posted three things and they have eighty five thousand followers and they've only tweeted thirteen times, but they have all these followers. Sure. I mean, a final one on that for you, Jeremy, and then we'll wrap up that that part of it. But is it not better? I mean, I feel it's probably better to have. Let's say I've got ten thousand followers that are engaging with me. I'd rather have that than. 500,000 who don't give a damn about anything I'm posting. Yes, you, your, your followers need to be active and interactive with you. They can't just be a number that says, I'm following you. That doesn't mean anything. Really what matters is that people are liking your posts and sharing your posts and commenting on your posts and interacting with you on a regular basis. And great for you if once in a while you have a post where a few thousand people interact, but it needs to be on a regular basis. Uh, everybody can go buy real people followers, but if they're not interacting with you, it's the same thing as, as not having them at all. So you need to spend time on the socials, interacting with your fans so that they interact back with you and you need to comment on there. It, it takes time, just like going to class takes time and working on your craft takes time. This is part of the business and it is part of networking uh, and you have to do it. Well, it's that thing of, you know, we're all uh, entrepreneurs or startups and of ourselves and the marketing side of any startup business, whether it's an app or whatever, is everything. If nobody knows your product doesn't exist, then what's the point? It's just weird. It's such a weird, it's weird to think like 10 years ago when it was like, what are you talking about? Twitter follow? What? <laughs> I know. Um Okay, another another question and no rhyme or reason with, with the order. This is coming from from Wallace. and. 
it's an interesting question he's got here. He says, if an actor is in the room and does an audition for you and you as the casting director aren't quite feeling it for whatever reason, do you ever then watch the tape back after to check whether that performance was totally different on screen and actually was different and, and had more to it? Sure. Um, there are some auditions that it just doesn't work and we don't need to talk about it again for this project, watch it again. It can go into the no pile. But yes, there are some that you're on the fence with in the room. Something intriguing to me. It's not really working right now. I'm not sure why. Let's watch the tape back later. And then we, you can step back and maybe after the crazy day you've had and you have a fresh head tomorrow, we'll watch the tape and say, oh, okay, this is what we liked. Let's get them back in the room. Let's call and give them notes and they can send us a self-tape doing the notes. Uh, or let's just get them on Skype or... Probably it's going to be Zoom now and do it live with them on Zoom. Uh, so yeah, every one of those possibilities that an actor can create, sure, we've done it, we will do it, uh, but there's no rhyme or reason. There's no, this is what happens every time. But, you know, we always want to find the best actor, actress for the job. So whatever we have to do to get there, we'll do it. But I guess you know intrinsically if the vibe is just you know, this just doesn't fit with that for whatever reason, like our bad, we brought them in and we show, or whatever. Yeah. You, you know, like that's, you don't have to waste time going back. It's time idea again, being that so happens. precious for you guys, but. Yes, a hundred percent. And then, you know, there's just sometimes oh, this actor is so good. They're so talented, but they fall through the cracks. They're not this role. They're not this role. It's just not working. There's nothing anybody can do about it this time, sure. you know, age wise or, you know, anything wise. It, if there's a glimmer of hope there, we're going to see what we can get out of it. Cool. Cool. That's good to know. Um, okay, let me see what else, what else have we got here? Well, I guess if we shift over to self tips a little bit, um, you probably get this asked a lot to be fair, but it is a question that's come in and it says when you watch your self tapes, is there anything specific that you look for? What kind of grabs your attention? What makes you interested? I, that's super broad. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's a, I guess that is the same thing. Same thing. In the room, you know, I, um, do you look like you could be this role? Are you doing something that's interesting? Uh, I think because I am more of a perfectionist type that with a self-tape, what I, I don't need to see it directing skills or editing skills in self-tapes. I want to see the acting. And I can tell plenty of stories where it wasn't a great self-tape, but the acting shined through. So they got the part. Um, but what I, what I don't like to see are, are the actors who, who don't take those moments to their advantage and the sound is off or it's really difficult to see or there's this big patch of sun behind them and I can't see their face or you know all of those those tech things that you could just not have in your tape if you watched it back it took two seconds. So what I'm looking for is your acting. The one shines through is, are you embodying what we need? Are you taking a risk? Are you making a choice? Are you committing to the choices that you're making? It is the same thing as in the room. Uh, but knowing that you really have to grab our attention because it's a self-tape and you're not there in the room with us, you may have to do it just that much more so that we really pay attention to the tape. Mm -hmm. You know, we get thousands and thousands if, if when we open it up to self tapes it's generally to get more to have more actors able to audition and you know, to reach other areas and so that opens the floodgates and there are thousands and thousands and thousands and we watch them especially if we're using a site like breakdown because the agents know when we've opened it when we've watched it if we didn't watch it so there's no trying to get away with it we you know we are responsible for watching the, all the tapes that we've asked for but I think there is, you know, that underlying thing of the performance still has to be strong. I think we're always looking for magic bullets. Like, should it be a blue backdrop or a gray one? What, you know, it's, and I think sometimes that's where the questions come from. And I get it. Uh, like being there, got the t-shirt. But as long as, as you're saying, the technical stuff on a basic level is correct, as in you can hear us, it's good sound quality, the framing is correct, and it's not like just a big wide or a super close up. 100 percent of all you need. We we uh, when I did Hell on Wheels uh, years ago, there was an actor we wanted to audition for the villain of the season, and 
He happened to be on a sailboat crossing the Pacific Ocean with his family. <sighs> well, sounds uh, awful. Sounds awful, yeah, right? Well, yeah. Also, like, yeah, we're, we're not going to, that's it. We have to go to our, to our next choice. And the Asian said, no, 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 he can self-tape. I'm like, from the middle of the Pacific Ocean? He's like, yes, he can self-tape. You'll have it tomorrow. Like, yeah, okay, sure. But he did. And he was legit on a sailboat with his wife and his kids. And what? There's no backdrop. The backdrop is the ocean and the sails and the. But they just turned on the camera, and you know, you could see the boat go up and down. There's the ocean splashing. The kids were screaming, whatever they were doing. But the acting, and it, none, the rest of it all dropped away. And I was so focused on his acting, and it was so fantastic. We literally was watching it with the casting director, and we said, "We have to send this to producers right now." And everybody freaked out. We were in LA. The producers were in Calgary, and this guy's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And they said, "Can you? Can you?" port him in Hawaii and get him on a plane and get him to set in two days. <laughs> it happens. And he was the villain of the season. And I think he worked, I don't know, wow. eight or 10 episodes or whatever it was. It was phenomenal. And that's, he, a, that's a movie it, in of itself. <laughs> and I, but we have casting directors will have a hundred of those stories. And when the actor just turns on the self tape on the plane or in the coat check of a, of a restaurant, because there's no other place to do it. And we need the tape right now for whatever reason. And, if you don't do it, you're definitely not getting the part, right? Sure. But if you do it and acknowledge location sucks, the situation sucks, but I'm going to do it. On the flip side, he's in the middle of this life. He's not even thinking about acting. He's on a vacation and it's like, oh, okay, this is what I do. Turn it on, do it. Turn it off back to what I was doing in the middle of the ocean. Like 100%. there's also a thing there that bodes to your advantage. Yes. In some ways. And obviously he was prepared to have wi-fi in the middle of the yeah ocean. that's the other one i'm like ah, how do you do that you know when you're when you're you know an actor of a certain level and you always have to be prepared i don't sure. know but uh you figure it out it. yeah there, there's that sort of that fucking attitude yeah i'm gonna do it and if i don't get it i will continue this wonderful sail across the ocean i love that he ported like just a few days later though and uh crazy it was crazy Awesome. Um, I have a few more, but I might leave them. And if we have time, I'll circle back at the end. If not, that's cool. But I've got people now waiting. So let's let's give you a break from me and let's bring in some people to, uh, <laughs> to ask some questions. Cool. So let me bring in Lauren, who I think is in LA. Some of these guys are like up super early, which is great. <laughs> yes, it's very early. Hey, Lauren. Just okay. waiting for your audio to connect. Audio, yeah. <laughs> That's the good old thing about Zoom. Yeah, but once it connects, it's rock solid. Yeah, hopefully. Better than Skype. Skype's yeah, like... I Skype. I'm done with Skype. Yeah, it's, it's super glitchy. Is this connecting, Lauren, or it's not connecting? Just as I say, Zoom is great. Here we go. There you go. You, you jinxed it. <laughs> no, it's great. It's perfect. Anyone watching, keep making a Zoom series. It's all good. <laughs> well, this is a good lesson because everyone needs to learn not just how to use a platform, but what the potential problems are. So you can be prepared for them and know how to deal with them and not freak out. What's tech on everyone's side, like for actors too. Right. Yay. You're with us. Yeah. That worked. Yay. How you doing? Uh, oh. oh, no, there we go. We're back. Oh, we're back. Okay, good. How you doing, Lauren? I'm good, thank you. Sorry about earlier. Awesome, no worries. Cool, well look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna let you and Jeremy have a bit of a chat. Ask away whatever questions you've got and the uh, floor is yours. Great, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this, first My of all. My pleasure, thank you for coming <laughs> up. Where are um, you? I, right now I'm in uh, West Hollywood. Okay, great. Um, I wanted to say that uh, Cloak and Dagger is one of my absolute favorite shows. So congratulations on, on how stellar that show is. It's, it's really We love terrific. that I was so bummed when they, when they canceled it. We love that show. <laughs> it's so terrific. And you should really be patting yourself on the back for how fantastic that casting is. It was just... Oh, thank you. Well, Corbin Brown, thank you. Awesome to work with. Yeah, I think it was a great job. So thank you. Yeah, you know, you're more than welcome. <laughs> so I, I guess uh, my first question would be, um, do you... Cliffhanger. <laughs> oh. Zoom suspense okay. moment. Do you? Do you? Yeah. Fill in the blanks at home? 
you work with certain agents? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm back. Okay, great. Sorry. Do I, I work with and, uh, Yeah. Is that the question? Um, yes. I mean, I will work with all agents and managers. It depends on the project. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, for sure, if I'm doing a network or a studio film, I think we're somewhat more limited into the agencies that we're working with uh, for time. You know, if I have a two hour window for a session and, and I have to cast this role in this, I'm gonna go with the agents that I know because I don't have time to then meet new actors or, or deal with agents that I might not know as well. I don't have time. Uh, but on especially my indie projects, which is another reason why I like the indie world so much, I can take my time, take more of my time, and I can meet new actors. I can uh, work with agents I don't know as well or don't know at all. And I can take a chance on actors who don't have maybe the resume that the others do. Uh, so I, I'm not the casting director who sends out a breakdown to only specific agents. If my breakdown's going out on breakdown, it's going out to everybody because uh, you never know where the right actor is going to come from mm -hmm. especially these days where there's so many companies now and everyone's changing names and merging I don't know who's what anymore it is impossible to keep track of over here so yes just submit your actors and we'll, we'll get it done and and how do you feel about um, self tapes versus in-person auditions uh, you know it is what it is now there's nothing better than an in-person audition Sure, but I don't know when, <laughs> when we're going to have those again. Uh, so how do I feel about Zoom or self-tape? I think it's what is going to be our absolute no new normal for a significant amount of time. Uh, so why not? I mean, self-tapes are great. I can see more actors. More actors get to audition. Uh, you know, I can see a hundred times the, the, the actors I can on a self-tape versus a window of a session in a, in a room. So why not? And I can see actors from all over if the production doesn't mind. So I think they're great. It's a great opportunity. Uh, when it comes to self-tapings, how strict are you when it comes to production value? And because I know a lot, a lot of LA casting is really strict about production value and no shadows and has to be against the backdrop and so on and so forth. Sometimes that comes from above. Sometimes it's not us, the producers or the studio or whomever wants to see what they want to see. Mm -hmm. For me, when it's up to me, that's the one thing I don't care about because you're not a director, you're not an editor, you're not a cinematographer, you're an actor and I want to see you acting. Now, yes, I would like the sound quality and the, the video quality to be as good as possible so that I can focus on your acting and it, there's something in it that's not bad and distracting me from the acting, but I don't need it to be some crisp, perfect, I just want to see you acting. So not everybody has the perfect situation or as we were just talking about before, you're not always in the perfect situation to have a perfect situation. You know, sometimes you get four days to get a self tape together and sometimes you get an hour. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to be in a restaurant and you have to pay the coat check person 20 bucks to videotape you in the coat closet, then that's what you've got. And you're going to get it done if you want the job. Mm -hmm. uh, or we were just talking about the actor I cast on a boat in the middle of the Pacific ocean as he was sailing and did a self tape overnight he got that job. Uh, I've had actors on planes. I've, you know, it's, the, it can happen wherever. So, uh, and in, in fact, uh, we cast Snowfall, the pilot for Snowfall, and I was working with Kim Harden, uh, and uh, Damson Idris sent in, he's the lead of Snowfall, if you know, don't know, he sent in a tape where he almost sort of produced this little short film, and <laughs> he had props, and he had different people, and when it said it in the script that a dog barks, he had a dog bark, like he did everything and normally I would that's just too much we don't need all of that I'm so distracted from all of that mm -hmm. but then there was something about it this time on this tape that just blew my mind and I can't get in here you have to look at this and you know now he's the star of the show and now Doug Barnes look at that wow that's yeah, awesome she, yeah she we appreciated that, that yeah uh, <laughs> so there's really no hard and fast rule every cast director is different and then what we're given from above is sometimes different, but for me, I just want to see you act. I don't want to see you guys freaking out or spending too much time on the rest of it. Mm. What, what is something that you absolutely do not want to see when someone comes into the room or on a self tape that you just absolutely despise? Uh, <laughs> but despise, but I don't like, 
actors who assume that because they prepared it 18 different ways that we're going to give them 18 different takes uh, or even two, right? So sometimes on a self tip, we also talked about this before, uh, if, if it's a small, small role, a few lines, whatever, I might say on a self tape, do it a few different ways. Don't just do it once, do it two or three different times so I can see it different ways. Mm -hmm. But in the room, you may not get that. So while you can certainly prepare it a few different ways, what mm -hmm. I don't like is when an actor comes in and says, so I've heard thought about this and I prepared it three different ways and I would like to show you all of them. Well, I can't, I, I can't because I can tell you from, just from looking at you in the room, you don't look like your headshot and you're not ready for this role and there's 60 people waiting. So right. you gotta pick your, pick what you think is the best and we're gonna go with that. And then if we need more, we can do more, but. Do you usually redirect in a session? I guess there's not really a usually, it depends. You know, sometimes even if you're totally not right for this role, but you showed me something that I'm interested in, I'll give you some redirection just so I can know you as an actor, or maybe there's another role or another project. Well, sometimes there's really just no need for a redirect and I don't want to fish for some note to give just to do it. I don't want to spend any more of your time or my time on something that's never going to happen. Uh, and then sometimes we'll give notes and be in there for 15 minutes together. So who knows? Oh, excellent. Well, thank you. I don't want to take up any of you more, more no time. Viewers. Time I know, is the you know, buzzword. Other people, other people to talk to. You can find but, me uh, on Instagram really and Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate book. you doing this. And yeah, um, no thank you so much for, you, for your time. And really, again, with the cloak and dagger. Thank you. Top notch work. I appreciate it. I'm sure our paths will cross in LA. Hope so. Hope so. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Lauren. Sure. Bye. Seamless. 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 Technology at work. It's great. Just a I've done enough of these to figure out how to remove people <laughs> and bring people in and all yes. the kind of tech. But at the first time, I was like, oh, I don't know how this is going to play out. And we used a waiting room for, uh, for our show that we did. And uh, it was really nice, except for the times that we totally forgot to turn on the waiting room. And we're in this big production, this big, heavy conversation, probably talking about the actors. And then they all start popping in. We're like, ah. I have the flip where people want to be in the waiting room and see what we're talking about because they don't want to duplicate questions, which is I totally yeah. understand. But then it's like, unless I pay the Zoom mega premium fee or something, I don't think that's even available to you. Oh, right. Um, did you guys, uh, with your Zoom thing, did you get that all filled in HD then? Do you know? You must have. It's filmed in HD, yeah. I mean, we had, I don't know what programs they use. We just, thank God for our tech people. Uh, yeah. I didn't have to think about it. We had three different camera and sound people. So they were recording, one person got the whole grid and then some were just recording one or two specific people that we were focusing on in that episode. Uh -huh. um, but we also purposely didn't want a super crisp, perfect show. We wanted it to be a Zoom show. We wanted it, you know, sometimes the sound was off, sometimes the light was different. We didn't want it to be network crisp because that's not Zoom experience. Sure. So it was shot in HD to the extent of every actor's internet connection. Some were great, and then we had some. But I hope they've upgraded their internet by now. It still works, though. Like, it still gives you the, 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 the feel. That's a whole new world. It really is. It's like all these new considerations of just tech things, where tech and creativity used to be two separate worlds, and now it's just all oh, come together. I have a friend of mine who actually was in quarantine who is a big commercial actor, in the middle of shooting our show, he got a big commercial job and this company dropped off all of the equipment because he shot at his house by himself. It was a, I don't remember, 12, 14, 16 hour commercial shoot day, a sad commercial, but he did everything. He had his director and his DP and everyone on Zoom, but he had to set up the cameras and the shots and he was crafty and, and wardrobe and air, he did everything by himself, a legit commercial shoot at home by himself. He was everything. Commercial and in a box. Commercial that's in a box, and that's, I guarantee you, that's going to be, uh, yeah, that's gonna keep happening. Well, yeah, like there's, oh, oh, here in the UK, there's been a lot of things where they've asked people to shoot at home, or do you live with another actor or a cinematographer? Like, what can you do? And literally, like, they're trying to find the crew that lives together and get them to shoot for them, and a lot of brands doing it on the cheap. 
Yeah, um, well, I hope Sky can step up to that plate very quickly. But it's interesting, like, yeah, trying to find a way for people to just self-shoot and actors have to be actors, but more than actors as well. Which, which is great. In the long run, right, it's great. So actors are going to learn learn more now, which is, and I think it's great in the long run for everyone's careers. Sure. And we'll have more respect on set too for like what they actually do as a DOP or whatever. And let's hope the actors can actually get paid for this from SAG. Sure, there's that too. Um, <laughs> talking of actors, let me bring in let me bring in another one. Let's bring in Scott. He's also in LA. All right. I like that I've got all these people up so early. <laughs> Morning. Go it. I was almost like, is is this happening? Or it is. It, ha it is happening. It's just that we're talking. We're talking. You know, for ages, and I'm probably way behind schedule. That's all, all right. good, Thanks, man. Scott. Hey, how you doing, Jeremy? Pleasure to meet you, man. Hey, you too. You're in LA. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. Where are you from? I'm from. Uh, I'm from the UK originally. A uh, little town called Wolverhampton. It's near Birmingham. Do you know that one? I've heard of it, but yeah. <laughs> Peaky Blinders. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Different time period, of course. <laughs> Hope, well, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> it could, it could be all fair. be changing in the midst of what we're fair. in. Yeah, we all be moving that way. Exactly. Awesome. awesome. Cool. I'm gonna yeah. shut up. Cool. Well, thanks for having me on, Ash. Appreciate mm -hmm. it, and, and great, a great day to meet you, Jeremy. Um, cool, man. I uh, I want to ask because I know I looked uh, looked at obviously a little bit of what you've been doing, and you got this um, quarantine show that you produce and cast. You guys have probably had a little chat about it already, but I for one would always like I would love to know like the ins and outs of that and how that's gone. Like what's been easy doing it this way, and kind of like what's been challenging doing it this way. Sure, nothing was easy doing it this way, uh, <laughs> except I guess that our fate was our fate and this was, we didn't have another way to do it so the easy part of it was that there was no real conversation we wanted to do this everyone was going to be at home at zoom and sort of accept all of the obstacles that we were going to have so there was no like oh, should we do it this way should we do it this way this is how it's going to be done because it's our only option if we want to do it first we need to get going so mm -hmm. the whole thing came together very quickly with a very loose plan uh, and a very loose story, and but we just had to start because if we waited too long and planned too much, someone else was going to do it. So we yeah. were the first ones. I think when we uh, when we started shooting, uh, Courtney B. Vance, who is the president of the SAG After Foundation, said we were the only active SAG contract in Hollywood. Uh, and that was true at the time we started shooting. I'm sure that was not true as we went on, but that's why we wanted to start. So we were the first and the only but we had no idea what we were doing or how we were doing it and episode to episode and week to week it changed uh, and we caught on and you know i guess we kind of wrote the book on it um there, there was nothing to follow we didn't know what we were doing how you produce a tv show on a network is vastly different than zoom uh you know we had some actors that were real life couples with a dog or a kid. And we had to shoot around nap schedule or just the kid walked in the room. So now the kid's on the show, we better get a deal memo done. Uh, so <laughs> sort of everything just had to be incorporated into the show and it, you know, tech issues, someone has bad internet in their building or don't walk into your bedroom with the, no, we lost them. <laughs> so it is what it is or something really we could do about most of it. I love how you incorporated all those happy accidents or not. You know, that's, that's great. We're, gonna do it, right? We're asking all these actors to work for free for months. And right. You can't get a babysitter. You can't stick the kid in the room by himself. So we were going to use the kid. We were going to use the dog. We were going to use whatever. The garbage right. truck outside. There's no waiting, holding for planes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's something to be said about just getting up and doing it when you don't know what you're doing. I think we all need that message consistently, you know? So that's really inspiring to hear that you kind of just, well, we've got to do it. And the love actors it. loved it. Everyone loved that we were busy uh, and con consistently being creative every week, every day. And we had this yeah. to look forward to. We shot every single weekend and, you know, we were all together every weekend and people loved it and the actors didn't want to stop. And we, uh, production was all like, I'm tired, we need a break, it's been a long journey. And the actress was like, but wait, I want more. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it going. So yeah. If we get back yeah. into another lockdown, who knows? Right, right. Second wave. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Cool, man. And uh, uh, how how has casting been during this? Because obviously I know we've had a lot to slow down here in terms of productions and stuff, but I also know some casting has continued, some hasn't. What's it been like kind of for you overall in that department? Yeah, for me, it's been, other than quarantine, the show, yeah. it's been slow. Uh, right. I've been approached to do another quarantine, another Zoom-based show. Um, I also have some producers in Australia that I work with. Uh, right. who, they're back into production there, so there's some work there, but I can't send any actors from the U.S. unless they have an Australian passport. So, you know, lear learning a lot about it at different things, but in terms of Hollywood, it's very slow. My, my, yeah. my work seems to be coming from online or other continents, which I'm not complaining about. Uh, I have been thinking that maybe Hollywood will get a little bit busier, but now with the spikes and the numbers, it just feels like we're going in the wrong direction. And I, I don't know. I just don't yeah, know. Yeah. You know, we're almost... Yeah in the middle we are all in the middle of summer when you think back from christmas if productions don't start shooting soon there's no point in starting before the new year which is what everybody right. runs into even without covid and now covid i just don't know totally no totally but like, you know, staying creative and doing things like this or or creating your own work or the zoom classes or zoom table reads Mm -hmm. Every anything and everything should be done. Stay creative. Got it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and one, one little, one. My last question: Is there for you like a, a dream show, film, uh, and or studio or network that you would just love to work on slash with? Good question. So I got to work on the remake of the show V. That sci-fi show V. It's just. Yeah. Thing about the yeah. aliens that come that have human skin on them and they rip it off and they're like lizards and I remember that but the original was like we're going we're going to the original yeah the original was the 80s yeah I, say, think I, I think I remember species. that I think the film species when you say that when they used to right yeah, be human skin into the I, I don't know so like, that was my favorite show growing up the original V so I got to work on the remake of that oh. which was yeah, awesome right. um <laughs> I, I think I would love to do like, I would love to do a Harry Potter type of show. And it doesn't necessarily need to be sci-fi or, or magic, but just they found these actors that nobody knew of and getting to see where they have gone in their careers. I would like to work on something like that. That is that sort of, I've worked on so many wonderful indie films that no one's ever heard of uh, that I would love to work on something like that that everyone has heard of and, and everyone can see that these amazing actors and where they go in their lives and you know you got Harry Potter coming from this little dorky wizard to naked on stage on Broadway and Equus and 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 seeing how they have blossomed and grown in their lives and, and changed and I, I love that um but a good I watch a lot of foreign dramas uh and I watch it in the original languages with subtitles I would love to cast something like that in Europe. Cool. That's kind of what I'm digging right now. Nice. That's for the actor for casting all the European actors in our stuff here anyway. So I might as well go to Europe and cast something there. Exactly. But Sounds now good. I can't get into Europe for a little while. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Next Want to year. Go home for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> okay cool well that's awesome man that's uh really insightful and just really great talking to you i appreciate it thanks well. for your time my pleasure yeah, thanks as well yeah thanks for coming on man cool. yeah no problem you All guys right. stay safe Have a good one you too, scott take care take man bye-bye bye i thought you were going to say something like uh something aaron sorkin-esque i thought you, oh, you yeah. know i thought maybe that's too obvious i thought you were just gonna go if i could have just you know done the west wing when it was happening Oh not, re not reboot sure. it. Not reboot. I don't want to reboot the West Wing, but I would love to cast something of Aaron Sorkin's. That's my. The West Wing is my favorite drama and my favorite comedy of all time. I uh, I saw the American President the other day for the first time in a long time, and it was weird. It was weird for one reason: why the hell is Bartlett not president? <laughs> like it was. It was a, and then I think is it true that that was the same set that they used for a lot of the West Wing itself? Or oh, I don't know. I don't know. It looks. Anyway, I thought that's where you're going to go with it. Cool. I saw that movie three times in the theaters in a week. 
what back when it came out in 90 and 95 was it 95 <laughs> whatever it was yes yeah. so when i first moved to california awesome okay let me bring in uh deanna here who i think you have cast before from what i'm told through the grapevine oh uh, yeah <laughs> there we go hi hello thank you for being patient no problem it's fine oh, cool hi now you get to meet jeremy finally so <laughs> Over to you guys to have a chat. Hey. It just took a pandemic for us to meet. I, I mean, know, we were supposed to have coffee. We were supposed to meet in L. It's, yeah. I know. But yeah. hey, now London, LA, that's great. I'm, I'm so glad to e-meet you. Totally. Hi. Um, and, and thank you, Ash, for putting this together. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for coming on. And, and thank you to, to Michelle for kind of uh, making this. I was going to say, does Michelle know you're here? Michelle knows everything. Even if we hadn't told Michelle, <laughs> Michelle would know. That's great. Yay. Cool. All right. Well, anyway, Deanna, your time to just have a bit of a chat with Jeremy, really, and I'll shut well, up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess um, the question that I have is, because of this whole situation, do you think that, um, well, this whole pandemic, do you think that in the room auditions um, will no longer be? <laughs> Impossible to say. Look, I think that they will not cease to be. I think they will cease to be for a period of time. Uh, and I think that, and I'm just, my best guesses right now, based on all the conversations that I'm having, everything will be self-tape uh, for the beginning. You know, the first rounds, the pre-reads, whatever you want to call them, self-tapes. And then we'll probably pare down and we'll, maybe just casting will get on zoom with the actors and and do some work as if we were in the room and and everything will get recorded and again we'll pare more down and show the director and the producers and then there'll be some director producer callbacks on zoom and then at some point someone's gonna have to get in the room i mean sometimes you can be cast from tape but you know chemistry reads are super important you know triangle we had some some chemistry reads a lot of projects we at least need to the two lead leads in a room together how what that's going to look like I, I don't i don't know it's so hard to imagine yeah. in an audition asking you guys to like get close and get romantic and i don't know so we'll have to see i think it will be few and far between uh, and i think massive safety precautions will be taken in my mind i can't see that happening tomorrow you know i think we're still too in it uh, and I don't know if I was an actor, I'd be like, give me that vaccine first. So, you know, there's no job worth your health or your life. So I think we're going to just have to deal with having things on tape for now. And casting usually can get with that, but it's, it's the producers and the networks and, and the directors that are going to really need to come to the table of Zoom 99% of it and make some decisions. Because I, cause I guess, um, like, the question that I had paired with this was, you know, how do we make those self-tapes more of an in-the-room experience? Because often, obviously, the in-the-room experience is so different. Yes. You get to play around, or there's things about the character that you might not necessarily know. And there's only, like, a, a brief that's very specific, right? So for that first round of auditions, is there any way of... I don't know if you've thought about that, of making that more of an interactive process, whether that's, oh, actually, we want two versions of that scene, one in a more aggressive way. Right. I guess, yeah, that was the next. Yeah, I mean, for sure, it depends on what the role is. Uh, we can't always say, yes, it's, it's 12, 17 page scenes, so do it 16 different ways and you know, we'll watch an hour of a self-tape. <laughs> but yes, right. I think I think doing it a few different ways. Uh, I will request that sometimes because if you're going to do the self tape, well, let's just see some choices. Mm. It's just easier that way. Um, I think personally, I think I'm going to have to be more open minded to what the actor is doing or choosing to do on the self tape because it's what's working for them. And knowing I'm not going to be in the room with them, I just sort of have to let things that might annoy me or things that I might not want to see. I have to sort of just let that go because now this is what the actor needs or maybe it's you grabbing your, I don't know who, who you live with or who's in your pod, but grabbing one of them to be in the scene with you to show that you can interact with somebody or you do have this romantic flair. I, I don't know. Uh, I think it's just a lot of yes and a lot of opening our minds to different 
different ways of doing things and every actor is going to be different. And, you know, now it's, we need you guys to be successful and it's going to be more difficult. So what do you need to be successful? I think is the question. That's really, um, I mean, that's really comforting to know as well, because obviously um, when we do it one way, we never know like, oh, like they probably want it in a different way. And we're always, <laughs> so it's nice to hear you say like that. Casting directors should be more open-minded. Like, I love that. <laughs> but now, I don't know if every casting director will be, but we should be. Uh, we all need the same thing, right? We need you guys to be successful. We, we want you guys to show us what the roles are. So hopefully we will be open-minded. Awesome. Thank you. That's all the questions I have, Ash. And, and so Ash. nice to see you. I love it. <laughs> awesome. That's, that's the best part. At least you guys could come together virtually and <laughs> next year, next year, coffee in LA. I think that hopefully yeah. is what we came for, right? I mean, that show that we cast her on was it was so much work. That show was so much work. I was so disappointed when they shot the entire pilot before the the studio decided if they were going to. I mean, there's so much work went into that massive, massive show. It was even massive. I mean, it was massive even being out in New Zealand and like the the scope of it all was huge. But yeah. That's the life, isn't it? That's what we... Life, I know. Well, at least we got to cash, or at least you got to go to New Zealand and have fun, right? Exactly. That was a, a, a once-in-a-lifetime experience, I think. I don't, we'll I don't get you know. back there. We'll cast you again. Don't you worry. Yeah, exactly. Cast me again in something in New Zealand, please. Right. <laughs> it's on tape now. This is on tape, so that, that's, that's fine. how it works. It's I'll out cast of the world. something in New Zealand that I'm producing so I can go with you this time. Ah, brilliant idea. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Lovely to see you. You too. Awesome. Give Michelle my love. I will do. And bye, Ash. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. That was a great surprise. Bringing people together through the power of the internet. Yes. Yeah, I dropped Michelle a note. I was like, look, I've got Jeremy on, as you know, anyone that you think might be uh, good to connect with. And she's like, I, I think I have someone in mind. Um, awesome. Yes. So happy to have done that. Well, look, that's uh, that's everybody that was in the in the little waiting room there. So that's that's all the actors that I wanted to bring okay. on. Uh, I guess to sort of wrap it up, maybe just for the last few minutes, it'd be nice to shift into casting to one side, bring you into the producer sure. mode a little bit and just chat a bit about, from a producer's mindset and a producer's perspective, forget the pandemic and all the rest of it because we can't control that. But what are some of the key things for you as a producer when it comes to how you approach getting your stuff made and, and I guess what goes on your slate. Do you look at like having a slate of a certain number of things minimum and always having something that could be funded or I'm just super keen to explore, I guess, that side of what you're doing. Yeah, I think as a producer, it's, and I guess more also as a casting director, it's just, yes, there's a lot of yes. Uh, there's a lot of work in sussing out the legitimacy of a project or of another producer or of the financing. There's so much work at that level because I don't have studios behind me doing it all. Uh, so I mean, you know, at any given time, myself and then the projects I've been doing with Spencer Garrett, there are so many projects or scripts or conversations that we have or, or making lists or having, you know, conference calls with all these people and we're trying to get this project off or that project off. It's, it's just a lot of yes and a lot of, of gut work and street work and, and really trying to see which of these projects is going to go, which of these projects is going to go now. You know, like the projects I'm doing in Australia, they want some U.S. names for this movie, but they can't bring them from the U.S. So now it's all right, are we going to produce this together? Can I produce this together? Australia has laws because of how they're funded and who can you have a U.S. producer, but I need to find out what names are stuck in Australia right now and want to do something. <laughs> so yeah, there are so many different things going on at any given time, and hopefully one of them will catch fire and go. Having your hand in lots of different pots and working with all these different people and saying yes to this lower budget film or... I've met directors working on their student thesis and then they've gone on to do other things or working on the short film for J.S. Mayank years ago led to a bunch of projects, most importantly, America 2.0, which was our number one podcast and will lead to other projects. And that's how Spencer and I 
really work together for the first time and then we formed Garrett Gordon Productions. So it's, it's the yes, it's the getting off the couch and going and doing and work begets work. Staying home and hoping that someone else is going to throw something in your lap doesn't get you very far. I think that's a really important message to for actors watching and listening because it applies just the same, right? Waiting for the audition to come and the phone to ring, especially now, like you just don't know. And even when you've auditioned, you don't know if you're even going to book it and, and get that job. Whereas the power comes in creating, whether, you know, no matter what side of, of the fence you're oh, yeah. on. A hundred percent. I mean, this is, this is, this is the time right now we're still, maybe we're not in lockdown, but we're still in this quarantine and you, everybody has extra time right now, even though a lot of people are busy uh, dealing with life during quarantine, it's the perfect time to produce your own whatever, or try it or go for it. That's why we did quarantine the show. And I see a, a lot of actors are doing similar types. There's so many YouTube shows and IGTV shows and, uh, my friends, I'm totally forgetting the name of the show now, but it's 60 second episodes on Instagram. So you you don't have to be 10 minutes. You can make it a minute. You can do all of these interesting ideas. The thing you talked about with Bonnie Gillespie, just go do things, create things. This is the time to do it. There's no reason not to. If it doesn't pop, it doesn't pop. But try it. Yeah, it shouldn't be about the pop either, really. I mean, you can't control that. I mean, you could a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's building creative IP. And as you said before, one thing leads to another thing and then it offshoots into this. And that guy that you directed was a director of a student film is now, you know, whatever. And, and yeah. that's kind of what the whole industry is built on. But I suppose at a more grassroots level for actors who feel sometimes like they're on the outside, it's, it's not that way. It doesn't have to be that way. You can do things, make things for yourself. Exactly. Exactly, which I think is important to have that producer mindset. Otherwise, we'll go nuts. And every actor has to be their own producer. They have to be their own publicist. They have to be their own champion. So why not? Hundred percent. Cool. All right, dude. Well, look, I, I finish these off with um, with the ten questions that uh, James Lipton asked at the end of Inside the Actor's Studio. So uh, let's let's rattle those off quick fire and okay. just see what see what comes to mind for you. So the first one is, what is your favorite word? Amazing. What is your least favorite word? Moist. <laughs> the next question sounds horrible having you just said that. It's what turns you on in a spiritually or intellectual or creative way. Uh, I like the, this, I love small, the small world aspect of this business, AKA what you just did with Diana Bermudez. That was amazing. It is a small world, even though it seems so huge. Yeah. We're so yeah. far away, but look at that. What turns you off? Uh, people who are entitled. Hopefully there's less of those people after this uh, lockdown period. Yes, hopefully. hopefully. Um, next one, I guess, is optional. I give it optional to people because it might not be on brand or whatever, but it's what's your favorite swear word? Fuck. There you go. <laughs> um, next question is, what's your favorite sound or noise? Uh, I love the crunching you hear when you walk on snow in a ski boot. That's a, it's a super specific sound, isn't it? I love it. Sound guy somewhere is going to be like, oh, finally someone who loves the nuances of sound like I do. <laughs> yes. What's your, what's your least favorite sound or noise? Dogs barking. Really? Yeah. Ah, so Lauren's dog, Lauren's, Lauren's dog barking earlier was, uh, no, that, was fine. that was fine. But like, the, the never ending like yip, 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 that goes on for like an hour. I just, yeah. yeah okay. Um, <laughs> what job or profession other than obviously your own ones would you most like to attempt? Yeah, mm, I think being a ski patrol. Okay. I really hope you could ski with all these ski and snow. I, can ski, yes, now. I, can ski. <laughs> I was going to say, um, I can't ski. I snowboarded once as a test. Never again. I almost decapitated somebody. I separated my shoulders snowboarding, so I'm going to stick to skiing. Is it harder, do you think, given that you've done both? Or is it just different I, skill I set? No, I just think I'm, I've been skiing for so long that I think trying to start snowboarding in your 30s after skiing forever is harder, but yeah. Fair shout. Um, what job or profession would you never want to do under any circumstance? Scripty. No. Oh. 
let's leave let's leave that one there so much focus and so much yeah that's a lot no <laughs> final question I'll put a little different spin on it but it's it's similar ilk to him it's when it's all said and done what would you like the story of your life to be i would like to sort of i mean maybe this is what everybody wants but i'm not i don't love the business just because i'm it's entertainment. I need there to be a socially important aspect to the stories that we're telling. And that doesn't have to be every single project I work on, but I think overall, uh, I want there to be a mark left, like quarantine was uh, gave all the money to the SAG AFTRA Foundation. So I, I need to feel like when I'm gone, people will remember that my projects had some kind of uh, social responsibility to them. And that it's been a part of the community in some way or enriched. Yeah. 100%. It's not, no, people have so many different answers to that question, to be fair. That's, that's a unique spin that hasn't come up before of a very similar ilk to what people do say. But. <laughs> sure. Um, cool. Well, listen, man, I, I appreciate you coming on. I guess final moments, you really to just sum up, you know, final thoughts, any kind of parting message that you want to leave people with and then, yeah, anywhere they can connect with you or, or catch quarantine, anything you want to plug. Floor sure. is yours. Uh, you can catch quarantine on Instagram. Uh, we have our own Instagram channel. You can find it through my profile or just search Quarantine uh, the Show. Uh, you can catch me on Instagram with just my name. Somehow I got lucky. It's Jeremy Gordon. I'm uh, on Twitter at Jeremy Casts. I also have a group for actors on Facebook called Casting Directors for Actors, F-O-R-4, not the number four. I think there are 110,000 members. It's great for networking and answering and asking questions uh, and just talking to other people around the world. I don't do direct messages or friend requests on Facebook with actors, but we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram. Uh, we can connect there. So reach out, say hi. Awesome, cool. Well, listen, man, appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for this and for being so patient and for getting Diana on the show. Yeah, it's been awesome, right? Everything, uh, you know, takes a bit of time and with patience, good things come to all of us. So yeah, I really appreciate it. Look, man, enjoy, enjoy however much longer you are spending back in Massachusetts. Um, you know, it seems like there's worse places you could be in the world. So, Yeah, we're off to the Botanical Garden shortly. So, Sounds good. I'm glad you're with family, too. I think that's, that's, you know, that's important. Agreed. Thank you very much. Awesome. All right, Jeremy. Thank you, man. I appreciate right. it. Right. Take, Take it care. easy. Bye-bye.